Hey guys, it's Jason here with a new video. So I just kind of wanted to give my opinion on this whole um, BTS I Heart video situation. Um, so I think the interview was Tuesday, not Monday. I think it was Tuesday, I think. Um, and, you know, people was, you know, I seen a lot of stuff on Twitter and stuff. People kind of pissed off about like some of the questions being asked and some people's behavior in the audience and stuff like that. So I said, okay. Let me find the interview and watch it for myself. So I watched the interview. I only just skipped over the music part because I'm like, I don't want, I, I kind of just want to watch the interview part. And okay, let me just first start off with the interview. I mean, the interview wasn't eye opening or groundbreaking or, you know, stuff like that. It's kind of like a basic interview that's been done before, just in a different setting. Um, now, I honestly thought that they were going to get kind of like how the setting was for the interview. I thought it was going to be more like in depth, to be honest. But it was just like a regular ass interview on my, um, okay, just in front of an audience. Um, okay, so here's my beef when it comes to media, when it comes to K-pop. What I'm going to need, one, for y'all to do is do y'all fucking research. It is not that hard. It is Google is your friend. It is free. Go through Twitter, whatever the fuck. You gotta, go, you gotta go through Twitter, Instagram, whatever the fuck. It's not that hard. But I'm gonna really need y'all to stop asking these fucking groups the same five questions. Just reiterate it. Like, stop asking them how they like the weather. Especially if they've been here, like, more than once. Like, seriously? Like, it's, it's one thing. Is that it's the, if it's just their first time here, that's one thing. But BTS has done been coming to America since 2014. Can we stop asking them how they enjoy the food and the weather and shit? Like, come on now. Like, let's let's cut that shit out. Stop it. Um. For one, stop asking them the celebrity crush. Stop doing that shit. Um. Of course, you know what I'm saying. They always ask like, who you want to collaborate with. And it's always, like, the same people, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's never, like, really, no one really different, to be honest. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. Um, I just really wish people just did their research. And it's, it's, it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. But, like, people just really don't do their research. Like, during the interview, like, Elvis had asked about the stops in the States. And I'm like, well, first of all, you, you're going to ask them what's their favorite stop. They're not going to tell you L.A., and in New York, what kind of goofy shit is that? They're gonna say New York, and um, or Jersey, whatever the fuck. And you know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm like, like the tour. And then it's like also the tour's over. <laughs> like the tour in the states is done. Like they still gotta go like to Europe and Brazil and shit. So I'm like, yeah, the tour. I'm like, okay, you do you do know that the tour is over, right? Because this was this is done after the last day in MetLife, which was Sunday. So. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, uh, okay. Um, and like, no shade to Elvis because like Elvis is an OG when it comes to radio. So he's been doing this shit since, I mean, I've been listening to Elvis since I was a kid. But I just feel like, really Elvis? Like, for real? Okay. Um, and another thing, I'm gonna need them to kind of stop doing or just try and do something different is mentioning armies. Now, I understand absolutely understand that armies is a big reason how they blew up in the states i got you but how many times are you going to ask them what the fandom means to them what message they want to portray how do they feel about them you know camping out for days and you know how you know crazy like oh you your, your fans are crazy you crazy your world da, da, da. like how many times are you going to ask them that like, again, y'all can't ask them nothing else about the fandom. Just have the same, like, five fucking questions. And, side note, I think a lot of people feel this way. And not just with BT. I think with just K-pop here. I think people feel like K-pop is a fucking fad. And it's going to be gone within, like, another two years or some shit. But I feel like at the rate it's going, it's not going nowhere. It's really not. Because people said the same shit about mumble rap. And there's another fucking... It's always some new mumble rapper popping up or whatever. 
Um, and the thing about it is like, I understand this is not the norm for y'all, but what y'all do need to understand that there are different types of genres of music all over the world that y'all may not know about. And these are people who take that shit serious. It doesn't matter if it's fucking German pop, fucking Desi pop, fucking Russian pop, J-pop, C-pop, Thai pop, Vietnamese pop, whatever the fuck type of music is from. They're artists, they're entertainers, they take this shit serious. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not just some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Just because you, it's not in English, it's still a genre of music, regardless of where the fuck the location is. And I just, I like I said, part of me, and I think a lot of people feel in the way people think that it's, it's no, it's just like, it's just something that's real cute for right now. Like, okay, you got these little cute little, little groups coming over here, blah, 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 whoop the whoop. Like, I don't think they realize that these are artists. They take this shit serious. And I feel, and I also feel like these people underestimate fans. Like they get so fucking shook when they see people, like you hear people about somebody can't like, especially with like the whole Good Morning America shit, and it was fucking shook that people was camped out like, like the week prior to the show. I'm like, but the thing, like the thing about it is, when it comes to just BTS in particular. BTS is no different than the One Direction and Justin Bieber. And let me explain. Because all three of these groups, all three of these acts aren't American. Number one. Number two, they had huge or have huge fandoms. The only difference is that one is Korean. That's the difference. And they, they don't they don't speak English. Well, you you know what I mean. Like English is not their main language. So that's the only difference. So I don't understand why people get so goddamn shook, like, oh my god, these people was camped out there for a week. Oh my god, you know, all these fandoms and this like it's just they are no different. They're no fucking different. <laughs> like it's really no fucking difference when they was popping. And I feel like they did the same thing with fucking One Direction. Like when they came out here and Directioners was fucking out here and shit. I felt like they didn't take them serious either. Oh, it's just some cool, it's some cute little group from the UK. Okay, whatever. Same thing with Beaver. Oh, this cute little kid from Canada. Oh yeah, he got some. You know, he got some wild ass from. Okay, whatever. Boop the boop. I felt. I feel like it's the same fucking shit. The same shit, which I don't understand. It's like, I don't understand why people get so goddamn shook. Like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, really? Really? Like, is it really that goddamn surprising? Like, if I feel like, you know, at the same time, I feel like they did this shit when the Beatles came over here. This was back in the 60s. Like, oh my God, these four guys from Liverpool and you got these American girls fucking falling over. Like, I feel like, I, I honestly feel like anybody... That has a huge fan base that comes to America. It doesn't matter if they're from fucking Korea, the UK, fucking Antarctica, wherever the fuck they come from. People over here just don't, they just get so damn surprised when they see that they have a huge fandom behind them. Like, whatever. Anywho. So, so here, okay, so let's just get to the audience which is i know like a lot of people had issues with i'm not gonna lie so i'll try to get tickets to the shit of course i didn't get tickets to it because i never do but what have pissed me off even more if i was there was the fact that i could barely hear what they were saying that's high key annoying and that happened a bit during the show it wasn't like every time somebody was speaking but i'm not gonna lie I could only hear maybe like 10, 15% of what the fuck they were saying because you'll just hear ran and, 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 and it wasn't even always in my section. It'll be like the bitch two sections over some hole just screaming her fucking head off. I'm like, they're speaking. I would like to hear what the fuck they're saying. 
is it is it that hard like i, I want to hear the shit and even though like it's a small room again like you just hear bitches screaming random members names and all this other shit i'm like yo shut the fuck up like first like i, like, I would have been so pissed the fact that like i spent my money getting to new york having to take a cab or Uber to the venue, having to wait in line, having to come inside. I'm in a fucking crowd of people and shit, like low-key triggering my goddamn claustrophobia. All I want to do is just watch the interview and go home. No, because I got to deal with bitches with cell phones and bitches screaming random shit. That would have pissed me off. Like, that would have pissed me all the way off. So I'm kind of glad my black ass didn't go. Um, And so... Now we want to get to the main thing at hand with the issue with the, um, asking about the whole question. Now, this is after the radio part was over. So this is they're still doing a live stream, but the radio part was over. Um, so, you know, Elvis asked them certain questions and then they asked, you know, oh, which member is known to... Um, it's most to, you know, forget the lyrics or, you know, and then it's like, oh, which member is known to mess up in the choreography and the people start screaming out Nam June and Jin. Now, if you've been, if you know anything about BTS in the beginning, we all know that Nam June and Jin were not the greatest dancers. I know they definitely got shit for it. But at the same time, as time went on, they got better and here we are and it's called growth think about it like this right shiny shiny debuts and you have this 16 15 16 year old kid cute as a button but one hell of a dancer but we don't know what the fuck he sounds like singing because they don't give him lines it's for a minute too for a hot minute now it's 2019 he's a solo artist He's doing shows. He's, you know what I'm saying? He's his own performer. Again, it's called growth and progression. You know what I'm saying? Look at Got 7. When they debuted, Yugim and, no, Yugim didn't even have any lines, I don't think. Young J had like an ad lib at the very fucking end, right? After that, you you see Yugim and Young J all over them fucking songs nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So, again, it's just, it's progression. It's progression. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone is not going to be perfect. But you work on it. And that's what Namjoon and Jin have done. In the beginning, weren't the greatest of dancers. Cool. The more they perform, the more they're, you know, practicing this stuff. You get, you like, you, you practice, you dance, you whatever you spend on them hours in the fucking practice room you get better that's how it is so i can kind of see like i said i'm trying to play devil's advocate so i can see how that could be a little upsetting to them because i mean no one wants to hear that you're a bad dancer or you know what I'm saying you're not a great you're not that great of a singer and no one wants to hear that shit but again again i can see you know you, you, we all know that they've gotten better over the years. Um, but then part of me feels like it wasn't that deep of a question. I mean, because again, people fuck up. It's not that, it's not that deep. People fuck up and that's okay. Not everyone is going to have a, you know, pitch perfect performance. I mean, there's big artists who, you know, may miss a cue in the choreo or may start the second verse a little early or, even a little late it happens doesn't mean you're a terrible artist or you know what i'm saying you're a shit singer you're a shit dancer shit happens it's it's what it's it's all gucci like not everyone is gonna be perfect i mean how even beyonce she i mean even though she's amazing but i mean there's probably times where she like kind of fucked up a little bit and that's okay that does that mean that beyonce is less of a less of a great artist that she is no people are human people fuck up it's not that big of a deal so it's like i said i'm trying to play like devil's advocate with that type of shit but 
yeah, like, I mean, the question thing wasn't really my issue. My issue was just how some people was in the audience. That shit was irritating. Like, I want to hear the interview. And it's like, that's another thing. It's like, when it comes to the fandom as of late, I can kind of see how people just don't fuck with armies. But at the same time, it's not everybody. It's really not. Because I know a bunch of armies that are chill as fuck. Stay in their lane. They just support the group. Keep them cute. Keep them moving. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're not entertaining the Twitter bullshit. They're not doing all that fuck shit on social media or like in public. And you know what I'm saying? When you're like out doing it, they're not doing all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's, like it's fucked up because they just generalize everybody as like that percentage when it's not the case. And I hate that people have to reiterate that. Like, it's not everybody that is, and it wasn't everyone in the audience. Like, I, I already know, like, it's not everyone that was there that was doing it. It was just certain people. But again, there's going to be people that just say, oh, everybody was doing that. When it's, when it's not the case. It's not the case. I mean, like, look at it like this, right? I kind of sympathize with armies. I mean, because I'm a VIP, right? And VIPs are going through some shit right now. You know what I mean? The whole Sungry shit took a, is, is taking a hit. People are split. Some people still are supporting him. Some people like, fuck that dude. I'm an OT4 stan. Um, how I stand, how I stand on it? Fuck him. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. But that's neither here nor there. But what I'm trying to say is I understand, you know, when it comes to armies, how like you're on one side, but you get thrown into another, you know, the other side when you're not a part of the other side. You know what I mean? Because I mean, just just because I'm a VIP doesn't mean I just like, you know, oh, I'm riding for Sungry because again, fuck that dude. And that's on everything. But again, that's. A whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. So, but yeah, so I just wanted to come on here and just kind of get my little two cents on this whole thing. And yeah, um, let me know your thoughts on it. Like, were you there? Did you watch it? How you feel about it? All that good shit. And yeah, I'm going to get out of here and I will see you guys next time. Bye.